Chelsea has an Elvis connection, a story that I heard about her mother and the king before, and only recently another connection to the king in the past, and this one. My initial reaction upon hearing it yesterday, Chels, I was like, no way, my jaw dropped. Well, this is a fun one for me. So if you know me, you know I love all things Memphis and history. And recently I was thrifting, which I also love to do, and I found an absolute gem. This is the original newspaper from the day that the king of rock and roll died. I spotted a front page article right here from our very own Otis Sanford. So I had to have a conversation with him about what it was like for him to be able to cover one of the biggest stories in history. How did we end up on the front page of that newspaper cover? Well, I just happened to be working that day. Uh, I was supposed to, as a young reporter, I'd only been there, what, eight months at that time, um, I was supposed to write the regular obituaries. The city editor, Angus McCarran, came out of his office and he had this wild look on his face. And he looked around for any reporter he could find. I just happened to be sitting there. And he looked at me and said, you need to get to the hospital right now. Elvis is there, and they think he's dead. And I said, what? <laughs> I didn't ask any more questions. I grabbed my pen and paper, and I didn't even drive to the hospital. It was, it was only about three or four blocks up the street. I ran to the, to the hospital, and I just started asking people what was going on. And then by that time, a, a senior reporter showed up. So after Otis and his senior reporter got all the interviews, they went back to the office. And that's when he got the assignment of a lifetime. They said, we want you two to write a combined story, uh, getting reaction from the hospital about Elvis dying. And that's what we did. They liked it well enough to put it on the front page and the rest is history because that is, I believe, the largest selling newspaper in the commercial field history. So what is on your mind? I mean, you're running. I know it's only a few blocks, but yeah. like, what's going through your mind? Obviously, Elvis, I mean, hearing Elvis is possibly dead. Yeah, possibly dead. I didn't know he was dead at that time. Right. What's going through your mind? Well, I mean, one thing was that, you know, there had been reports that Elvis, you know, Elvis went to the hospital more than a few times. So it could have been, you know, just he was there, or he was um, being treated, and he probably was going to be released. So I thought about that. But then the, the frantic look on my editor's face told me that this was much more serious. I thought for a brief second, if Elvis is dead, this is the biggest story of my whole career right here. And I'm, what, 24 years old at that time. When I get there, it is confirmed that Elvis is dead. I had one advantage in that the, a high school classmate of mine was working in the emergency room. My friend told me that, um, Elvis was not breathing when he was wheeled in the door, and most people knew it, um, but they didn't want to say anything. And so he looked, he saw Elvis coming in, uh, and that's, that was pretty much it. Just, the, just the, uh, the atmosphere and the frantic nature of what was going on in the emergency room when they were wheeling him in earlier that day. Well, we spoke about so much that happened that day, the madness in the following days worldwide. So to hear our full chat and an additional interview with my mother, who was uh, on Elvis's best friend, George Klein's TV show talent party and dated a member of the inner circle known as the Memphis Mafia. That's how I have this Elvis scarf with his sweat signed and everything, the concert tickets, all of it. You can visit our website and YouTube page for my podcast, Checking In With Chelsea. We'll be back.